Hi, so um, this is Charlotte and um, oh, well, I suppose I could ask you what your name is, but this is Charlotte. Um, can you let everybody know how old you are and what your job is? Uh, well, I'm 43 years old and I'm an actor. Okay. So what are the roles and responsibilities in your job as an actor? So that's um, a, a difficult question to answer in, in short format because um, I have done so many different things over the years as an actor um, and, and gone many different places and worked in many different roles. So my um, roles and responsibilities can vary from um, being uh, taking on all sorts of roles in a theatre production in a theatre company because everybody in a, a low budget theatre company has to take on lots of different roles. Um, so you're not only necessarily on stage, but you might also be doing production tasks um, and fundraising and marketing and all sorts of things. Um, to some of the things I do these days in, in casual jobs, uh, like being a simulated patient for medical students for their exams or for physio students so they can practice on a patient who is... Um, who is not actually uh, sick or injured. Um, so my responsibilities there are to make sure that I'm consistent, stick to the role um, and, you know, and help educate them as best I can. Um, and obviously the, the responsibility to entertain. So if I'm performing on stage or if I'm entertaining people at a public gathering or hosting a murder mystery, um, uh, recording a voiceover, I, I, I need to be entertaining and informative. Okay, so it sounds like there's like lots of different different things that you could do as an actor. So I know when I was a kid, I always thought that an actor was just like someone that was on TV or in the movies. But it sounds like your role is actually not that TV and movies aren't important, but to be an actor where you're sort of helping people get their medical degree and stuff like that seems like a really um, big responsibility. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very different to screen acting. I've never been a screen actor. That's um, not something that's, that's my forte. I much prefer being in a face-to-face -face capacity, whether it's on stage and having a live audience. So you get that immediate feedback and, and um, response to work with or whether it is in a, you know, um, a more live performance sort of uh, role one on one with a with a medical student or with a group of people having a party, which it sounds like is going on out there right now. I was going to say, it sounds like you've got a little murder mystery going on at the moment out outside. Shall I just uh, send out a little uh, be quiet message? <laughs> well, we can we could always ask them for that. Yeah. Boys. Jasper, Jasper, upstairs please, I'm recording. I'm in a meeting. Thank you. <laughs> oh, the life of that, uh, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I can get someone to edit it out. I can't, but someone will. <laughs> um, That's all right. So how long have you been an actor? Who? Um, for a long time, um, I suppose <laughs> you could say I've been an actor since I did my first production when I was in grade five at primary school. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I, um, I've worked professionally as an actor since um, oh the mid nineties. A long time. 90s, yeah. yeah, I think nineteen ninety eight. I did my first professional production. That's almost twenty five years. Ah! <laughs> long time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pretend that that's not the case. <laughs> so yeah. I guess, was this your first job? Um, no, no. My first job was um, when I was at high school and I was working at um, uh, Woolies, or well, Safeway at the time, um, as a checkout chick. And um, why did you change? Why did you decide, why did you decide not to stay a checkout chick? Uh, well, the checkout chick was um, the easiest and best thing and something that I enjoyed doing when I was at school um, gave me some independence and um, some money and it also bought me time while I was studying um, to try and work out what I wanted to do um, but it wasn't to me 
where I saw my career heading. Um, I just didn't really know where I saw my career heading. I knew I loved performing. Uh, so when I got to the end of my degree and I still didn't know what I wanted to do, um, I was, I didn't think acting was something I could do and earn enough money to, to make a living. So I did other, other jobs that were sort of related. I worked in a dance workshop. I did marketing, um, for them and, and managed wholesale, um, deliveries and so on. And I, um, I looked at working in a costume shop. I did all sorts of things, um, that were, that were related to the arts, um, yeah. at Fort dancing for a while, but what I really wanted to do was perform. And so it was all, oh, any job I've had over the years, I call, um, fueling my, my acting habit. Yeah. Supporting, giving me the money so I can do what I want to do in a job that doesn't always pay a lot of money. And that's pretty standard, isn't it, for a job in the arts industry, whether it's in music or dance or performing, is you sort of do have to work your way up through, you, you can't just sort of, well, maybe some people, but it seems like most people, you know, pay their dues and work their way up until they get to a point where they can sort of sustain a living doing what they love. Absolutely. And the hard news is that some people... Um, can can get to that point where they make, they're making a good living and then it can turn around and stop just like that. Um, it can disappear one um, one year, one week, one month, your um, flavour of the month with a, a theatre company or on a TV show or something like that. And then you move on from that for whatever reason and there's no guarantee that there's something else waiting at the other end. Um, so I think every actor I know has a backup or um, what they might consider their main job, the thing that gives them their, their main income, um, so they can still practice their art for the love of it, um, because it's it's more of a, a calling or a passion than it necessarily is a um, a paid lifestyle, a well paid lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> so if you if you were wanting to get into the career that you're in. Um, a lot of the students are sort of looking at the moment at career pathways and um, what sort of subjects they should be doing and stuff like that. So I suppose, first of all, do you think that the subjects that you did in high school um, linked to what you wanted to do and what were the subjects that you did? Um, I did a range of subjects in high school because Again, I didn't see that acting would necessarily be or, or dancing. I was, I was very much into dance um, at high school and I still am. Um, didn't see that that was going to be a viable career path for me. So I really was trying to keep options open. Um, I knew I was very artsy. So I did um, uh, a lot of art subjects. I, was, I did drama, dance when I could. I did um, literature. I was very much into the, the writing side of things. But I also did maths and science just because I didn't, I, I was able to do them um, and I, di I didn't know what I wanted to go into. So I, I think um, if you're not sure, keeping your options open is always good, working to your strengths um, yeah. and, yeah, and just not maybe not funneling yourself into one one area if you're not 100% sure that, that you can do it or um, that you want to do it. Mm. And then what about after you left school? So did you go all the way through to year 12 and then did you do further study after that? I did. Um, I finished year 12 and I actually applied to a range of different courses because um, I really wasn't sure. I, I knew I was into the arts and I ended up doing um, uh, just a straight arts degree, Bachelor of Arts. I majored in drama and performance studies, but I also did literature and history as part of that. But I remember when I was looking at courses to select, I was also considering journalism and social work and all sorts of things. Um, and I fully expected that I would end up teaching in some form or another because I've got a lot of teachers in my family and um, it just felt like probably something I would end up in and I haven't ended up in a conventional teaching role. I'm not a high school teacher or a primary school teacher, which is what I originally wanted to be when I was um, much younger. Um, but I certainly do a lot of teaching and instructing yep. in, in, my, in my job. So do you actually need to have a specific qualification to do your job or do you just have to have the talent? 
you don't necessarily have to have um, a degree or a qualification. Um, there are certainly a lot of different types of training you can do. Um, mine was a, a fairly conventional university degree. So um, particularly because I was looking at, at, at theatre, um, a lot of the subjects that I was able to take as part of my degree covered theatre making, covered all the different roles in a theatre production, as well as um, studying some you know, classic plays and, and obviously a lot of performance as well. Um, and we did everything. I was at uh, Rusden, which was um, a campus of Deakin University. It doesn't, it doesn't exist anymore, but it was a great place. And we would do everything from, oh, you're going to use the theatre? Well, you can paint it whatever colour you like. And so we'd all get in and we'd paint the theatre and, and set it up as we want. We'd be in charge of the lighting, um, creating the costumes, all of that sort of thing. Um, it was really good. It, it turned out um, rounded rounded performers and arts practitioners rather than simply someone who gets given a script and, and directed. Um, but there are lots of other courses you can do. There are short courses. There are obviously the big acting institutions like um, NIDA and WAPA and uh, VCA. So um, I should use full Victorian College of the Arts, the <laughs> Western Australian Academy of Performing Arts and the National Institute of Dramatic Arts in various <laughs> states um, and lots of other places around the country too. Um, and they're very competitive. So you... you you audition and you wouldn't expect to get in and sometimes you audition multiple times and you might get in on your third go or you might not get in at all. Um, that that sort of a name on your CV will would certainly help a lot in terms yep. of getting acting jobs, whether it's stage or screen, that really helps because they know you've had a really solid education and they know you've got the talent if you've managed to get into to a place like that. But you could just as easily do short courses um, or just pick up on the job training. And given, you know, what I know about the things that you've done over the years, it's certainly, I think, your background at school and your other life experiences have probably made you more, um, I don't know, flexible is the right word, but it's, you, you've got more options. You can, because I know that you've done voice recording for radio and stuff like that. And rather than just having a really narrow pathway you've you've got all of these different things that you do at the moment I know you perform um at festivals and things like that and all sorts of stuff yeah lots of different things going on at the moment um so I would say these days I'm what you'd call a jobbing actor um and I am I feel extremely privileged to be able to make um uh, I was going to say the majority of my income but really all of my income from performing in some way or another and I do the sort of jobs that when I was um, really heavily involved in theatre, when I had the luxury of being able to do that because I didn't have a mortgage and I didn't have children um, and I didn't have other responsibilities that were sort of tying me to the one place. Um, and I could afford to uh, jump into any production that inspired me, whether it was going to pay me or not. Um, I would make sure I had enough money to get by doing jobs such as being a simulated patient um, or um, hosting murder mystery parties or children's parties, um, whatever it might be. And that's the sort of thing that I do a bit more often now, um, which is great because I haven't got to the point in my career where I'm going, well, I really don't know what I'm going to do now. There's not a lot of acting work that pays enough money to, to support um, my family and my lifestyle. So, um, you know, I'll have to go into something else altogether, but I've managed to stay in, in the arts and in performing. And it's, it's really varied. One day I might be recording a voiceover. One day I'll be in a green wig, um, performing to primary school students, teaching them about recycling and sustainability. Um, and yeah, one day I might be in a completely different costume altogether, um, pretending to solve a murder at someone's birthday party. <laughs> so you've talked a little bit about it and um, it's what a lot of um, young people want to know, but not necessarily what a lot of adults want to answer is uh, the kind of income or um, money that you earn doing what you do. So do you feel comfortable talking about that or perhaps giving our students a bit of an idea of a range that you work in obviously if you prefer not to say that's okay as well that's okay um there is a huge range of 
possible incomes in this um, in this industry, right from some fabulous productions that I would absolutely encourage people to get involved in um, if they're interested in acting that might be profit share or might not, you wouldn't expect to make any money or it would be a very, just a very small amount, certainly not enough to cover the amount of time you've put into it. And that doesn't make them any less valuable in terms of experience and um, just general joy to be a part of. Um, with a lot of the acting and the performance work I do, you might say, oh, if I go and host a party, I might earn um, several hundred dollars in, in a few hours, which sounds fantastic, but um, I'm not doing that every day. I might not even do it every week. Um, and same with the hourly rate for um, working with, with medical students or physio students. Um, it can be quite a good hourly rate. Um, and you can get a short-term job that, that pays quite well, you know, several thousand dollars over um, a couple of weeks or something. But then you might only do that once a year. So it really is, it's as with a lot of casual work, it's really reflective of um, you can, you, you might get a higher rate at the time, but it's, it's not reliable work. It's mm -hmm. not steady work. Yeah. Um, and yeah. as we've discovered, even the people who think they're in the safest work at the moment may not be so um, I know performers who hit the jackpot being in things like um, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child which they knew were going was going to run for such a long time and that's that is a wonderful thing as an actor to have that security of knowing that you've got a job a contract that's going on for a certain period of time and of course now it's all stopped yeah. so and acting is a very difficult profession to do from home yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, it's, true. it's it, it's hard to say. I, I certainly wouldn't say if you're looking to get rich quick, this is the the profession for you. Some people get very lucky. Some people move to Hollywood. Some people make yeah. a um a big movie. But most of us are never going to be millionaires. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I guess that's what's hard about your job is the, the uncertainty of knowing. You know, it's it's not like um a nine to five job where, you know, okay, I'm getting this much money every week. So I know I can afford to pay my bills and my mortgage and for kids and all that sort of thing. Is there anything yeah. else that's hard about the job? Oh, lots of things that are hard about the job. Um, it can be something like having a really emotional role to play. Um, and that, that might be an on-stage role where you have to um, repeatedly go through some sort of trauma as part of a, a production and you do that every night on stage until the production finishes and then you have to try and put that part of you away <laughs> um, and that can be quite difficult, um, ending a production um, and losing these really tight, close relationships you've formed with these people over a short period of time, a really intense working period and then you move on and you might not see those people again. Um, you, you put that role to bed, you might never play it again. And that can be very difficult. Um, by the same token, I might be working with medical students and playing a very emotional role because part of my job might be to help those students um, uh, develop their communication skills and their empathy. Um, so I might have to be, they might have to give me really bad news about my own health or about um, perhaps my baby's health or something like that. Um, and I might need to get very emotional and cry and give them something to, um, to work with so they can practice those, those um, empathy and communication skills. Um, and that is very difficult. Give someone 12 minutes, give them some very bad news, have them react to that. And then they have to wipe off their eyes and be ready for the next student to come in and you're waiting for the, them to give you the same news again and you might yeah. do that 40 times in oh, a row. That sounds hard, actually. <laughs> that is difficult. Yeah. Is. Um, <laughs> yeah. And what do you but, like about your job? Because obviously you've uh, been doing it for 25 years now, so there must be something that you enjoy. So much. I love it. Um, I love the variety of it. I love that one day I have one hair colour and one accent and the next day I have a different hair colour, a different costume and a different accent. 
I love that I don't spend all day in an office. I don't spend much time in an office at all, um, which, which wouldn't suit me. I don't think I love that I travel to different places and I meet different people um, and that I can develop really close bonds with people over an intense working period. Um, you get really close to people and you, you learn all sorts of things about them when you're um, performing with them. And just some of the amazing experiences I've had being able to travel, running a theatre company um, with two other wonderful people. We, we really um, met on one production and, and really felt a bond and we started our own theatre company and we, we travelled, we toured productions um, around Australia and around the world. I've been to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival several times, which is just an amazing experience. Um, the Adelaide Fringe Festival, obviously, um, working at theatres in Melbourne. Um, I've uh, toured around the UK uh, and Ireland. It's just been amazing. The, the doors that have opened up and the, the world, the life experience that I've had with, with this job is just wonderful. That's awesome. Uh, so just lastly, um, what sort of traits do you think someone needs to have to have a job like yours? Um, an outgoing personality, I think, is important. You probably don't want to be on the stage if you're particularly shy. Um, a bit of a thick skin <laughs> because things don't always go right. You won't get the role every time. You might get the role and the show might flop or you might get a terrible review. Um, so you need to have that resilience to not not give up. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep. Resilience is important. You need to believe in yourself or um, uh, be adaptable too. I think adaptability is important to be able to um, say this path isn't working for me right now. So I'm going to try something a little different. Maybe Shakespeare isn't my thing. Maybe, um, maybe I should work with more modern um, playwrights performances. Um, oh, what else? Uh, I think um, a good uh, um, ability to listen and take direction, I think is important because there's always an outside eye um, telling you what sort of changes to make. Um, sense of fun. Um, got to be hardworking, got to be prepared to really knuckle down when, when the work's there. Um, Oh, I don't know. What else? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that throughout, I think throughout the whole interview, you've sort of given given our students a really a really quite deep understanding of what work you do and how it's quite different to what people probably picture in their minds when they think actor. So, um, I really appreciate you sort of joining me so that we could give our students a bit of an insight into it. Um, is there anything else that you haven't sort of talked about already that you feel would be important for them to know? Or do you think we've pretty much covered everything? Um, I think we've covered most things. I think if it's something that you really love, remember that um, it doesn't have to be your only job. Mm -hmm. If it's something you really love doing, just yeah. um, make it happen. Make it happen. Awesome. Well, thanks, thanks for joining us today, Charlotte. Thank you for having me. Um, all right. I'm going to stop.